Recent research has connected red dye number 40 with bowel problems. Who would have thought that an artificial dye would be problematic to our health? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. How you doing? And certainly if you've been following my channel for a while, you know I'm very interested in what is going into our bodies and what the healthy things are and the things that could be hurtful. And uh, so now we're going to talk about red dye number 40, um, something that is probably one of the most artificial looking substances that we could consume. Um, certainly nothing in nature really takes on that color. Um, very few things, I should say. Um, I guess you could say about strawberries and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, it's something that was originally um, recommended to be avoiding um, food colorings um, going back to the 70s. And depending on how old you are, how connected you are, you might have remembered something called the um, the fine gold diet. OK, and the fine gold diet was was put forth as a potential remedy for ADHD, for hyperactivity, attention problems, um, where the three recommendations were to avoid foods that are high in salicylates, phenols and food colorings. OK, and, you know, it was considered quackery amongst most of mainstream medicine, but nonetheless, it was something that was put forward. And there really, although wasn't any real research to back it up. Now, I'll fast forward to the 1990s because that's when I first started getting involved because 94 is when I started my pediatric residency and by 97 when I was out on my own. And one of the things that I would be hearing from parents from time to time is, oh, my gosh, red dyes really tweak my kid out. They can't even have any of it whatsoever. And so, you know, I did some research at the time. Again, there was really no research about it. But one of the things that I learned early in my career, listen to the parents. Why would they make something like that up? Right. If they don't want their kids eating it, they wouldn't. But, you know, most kids, most parents want their kids to just eat and be happy and stuff like that. So, you know, obviously it's an observation. And so, you know, we would talk about, well, let's check it out for real. If there's behaviors or allergies or other things, let's do an elimination diet. You know, yes, you could take one thing away from the diet at a time. But if you're reacting to two things or more. You may not ever realize that there was a problem with the one thing you brought out. In fact, my mentor, Dr. Baker, used to say it's like kind of if you're standing on two thumbtacks and you take one out of your foot, you don't feel half better. Right. You still got a thumbtack in your foot. So you really kind of have to avoid all of the potentially inc um, inciting issues, the problematic ish, um, foods in order to um, really see if there's a difference. So certainly food colorings is one of the things when we do an elimination reintroduction diet that we would want people to be avoiding. And then, of course, you bring it back and you see if there's a reaction one by one. Now, um, also, just in terms of being in functional medicine, we're always talking about avoiding anything artificial, avoiding something that you things that you can't pronounce that are in the on the food list, on the ingredients. Right. If you can't pronounce it, should we put it in the body? Now, it's interesting. So, you know, red dye um, number 40, it has a couple other names. You may also see it listed as Allura Red AC. I'm not sure what the AC stands for. And also Food Red 17. So I don't know if maybe they're just trying to say, well, let's not put the 40 in there. Let's call it that. So so it's called, um, it's also <laughs> number 17. Um, but here's the interesting thing about it. And I'm going to have to look this one up because you'll see in a moment why. But the actual chemical name for red dye number 40 is disodium 6 hydroxy 5 2 methoxy 5 methyl 4 sulfana sulfonatophenyl diazonyl naphthalene 2 sulfonate sounds delicious right we should all be just pounding this stuff into us wow that's one heck of a name there right i'm glad no way i was gonna memorize that one for you guys uh but yeah so uh yeah so that's the chemical right wow wow and even some of that was even hard for me to pronounce and i'm used to pronouncing these kind of words all day long all right so why it was food dyes brought up quite frankly to attract kids Colorful, right? There's a reason, you know, look at food colorings and cereals and candies and stuff. None of that looks natural whatsoever. You know, colorings attract children. There's a reason why um, the most sugary kid-like cereals are down on the bottom shelves of most supermarkets, not up high, because when kids are walking by or kids are in the, um, are in their, in the cart, that they're going to see things lower down. And so it attracts their colorings when there's big toucans and and tigers and sugar 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 and nice blue and red and yellow corn pops all of this types of stuff and then you get to the healthier looking cereals and they look more natural right so again something just in terms of you know advertising marketing product development in order to do nothing but to draw our kids into it and that's a problem right 
Okay, now, where is this mostly found at? It's mostly found in red candies. It's found in um, red sodas. It's uh, um, also, again, in some cereals. But here's the other thing. It's, a, it's the main color red. That's in antibiotics, especially like amoxicillin and azithromycin or azithromax, two of the most common antibiotics that's being used. And one of the things that's also been shown about red dye number 40 is um is that in which I'll talk about in a second is the how it disrupts the intestinal microbiome, the good guys that are living there. But you know what? When you're taking an antibiotic, it does the same thing. So there could very well be a double whammy happening in the artificial red color um, enhanced antibiotics that kids often take. OK, so now in terms of this study that um, that has been um, that has been shown here. So it was done in mice. OK, um, and in half of the mice, they gave them regular chow and half of them. They gave them the chow that had the red dye in it, weight adjusted because obviously they're smaller, but weight adjusted for the typical amount of red dye. Number 40 that could be in a in a kid's diet, in a human's diet. OK, and what did they find? They found that long term consumption of the red dye. Number 40 was a potential trigger for um, inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, etc. Stuff that could be really bad. OK, um, now, as far as this, they went into it more as to why they think this happened. And what they saw is that the red dye number 40 significantly increased the amount of serotonin, the neurotransmitter that is in the gut. OK, and, and it's secreted there. So, you know, usually we think of, neuro, of serotonin for anxiety and in, 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 the, in the central nervous system. But it actually serotonin is tremendously produced potentially in the gut and it makes that go up. Now, what they found is that increasing the serotonin increased inflammation in the gut. It also found, as I mentioned, it, it altered the microbiome, the, the flora that's supposed to be there. OK, and then as a result of that, they determined that it increased leaky gut or what we call increased intestinal permeability, things that are, would be getting into the bloodstream from the gut space that normally wouldn't be passed along in a tight gut situation because then it has to be fully digested and then there's a barrier. But if the intestines are acting like a sieve instead of as a barrier, then we know that that can bring toxins into the body. It can cause abnormal immunological responses that wouldn't normally happen, inflammation from the cytokines as a result of that, and the histamines, etc. So pretty bad stuff as to what can happen here. Now, Previously, these researchers actually did a study where they compared the red blue 40, the red dye, um, the red dye 40, with a few other food colorings, in particular, brilliant blue, sunset yellow, and tartrazine yellow. I think it's kind of funny that they uh, that they try to make these uh, sound so in, um, so appetizing, right? Sunshine yellow. Um, but anyways, they found that the red dye number 40 caused the most of a amount of problem in terms of serotonin being excreted compared to all of those. And that was especially so when even the most minute amounts in terms of micrograms was given, but for each for each one of those things at the same dose, they found that it caused the most problems. Okay. Now also just to let you know, the, the, the same author is, hey, I'm glad that they did this because some of the other things that we've talked about, the, um, like emulsifiers, you know, things that allow things to, um, like polysorbate 80, um, carboxymethylcellulose, OK, um, they've, they also showed that those things, artificial sweeteners, um, also alter the gut microbiome, increasing intestinal permeability, decreasing the thickness of the mucus. That is the kind of the coder of the intestinal tract and can promote colitis. So it's not just red dyes, but a lot of these words that we don't normally spell and pronounce, they're, they're causing problems to people. So what is my take home message here? First of all, avoid the sad diet. You may hear the sad diet, the standard American diet. OK, again, not just if it has things in it that we can't pronounce, we probably shouldn't eat it, but just avoiding processed foods, eating whole foods. OK, not artificial sweeteners, no, not avoiding high sugars, but a nice whole food based diet. By far and away, we know that this is the healthiest way to go. OK, um, and just overall eating whole foods. Right. I mean, like there's enough out there and I, I don't mean purchasing from the place called Whole Foods, but obviously, you know, we can purchase whole foods. Obviously, it does take more effort to prepare foods as opposed to putting something in a microwave or something like that. But every opportunity we have to make whole foods, then they're going to have less of this other stuff in it. 
So there you go. Hopefully maybe you've learned something and you could at least avoid your kids or somebody in your family developing Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Again, this wasn't done in adults. I do want to point that out. I mean, in, in humans, but there's no reason to suspect that it wouldn't be the same type of thing. There's a reason why we use rice, rice, rats and mice in our, um, in our science because of the similarities that we find. And so this is just another case. Have a good day. Thank you.